Hello. Uh, Evan Rowe. Hi. Can you hear me okay? This is my first one of these, so I'm just making sure that the settings are all A-OK. -okay. Just going to wait for some more people to pop in. And in the meantime, I'll start doing some sorting. Hey, what's up, Max Gubbins? Freddie, hello. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? What's up, the brick former? All right, awesome. Uh, hello there, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so today uh, I just figured I have a lot of loose brick that I need to be um, sorting out over the next couple of months because <laughs> it's been it's been a few years since I did any of that. And so I thought I'd just um, hop on the stream with you guys while I do that because, you know, otherwise I'll just be sitting and listening to podcasts and stuff. And uh, this is more fun, I think, so... Uh, Tony Scott, how's it going? Uh, I'm a fan of your films, if indeed you are the director, Tony Scott. But uh, yes, I'm doing very well, thank you. Oh, the brick former says you've been watching me for a year. That's that's pretty rad, thank you. Hey, Adam's in the stream. What's up, Adam? Uh, I'm doing good, thanks. <laughs> yeah, so the um, the other thing I thought would be fun about this is that you guys can see how I sort my brick, which is um, very lamely, actually, compared to a lot of people that have super advanced uh, systems. Did anybody get this Easter egg thing, by the way? I thought this thing was so weird. It's cool, but it's very weird. Um, but yeah, like I just, uh, I basically just do general color groups and then plates and brick type. Uh, that's, that's as advanced as my system gets, so. <laughs> Love you guys have asked in the past how I keep everything organized and that's basically it. <laughs> it looks like a graveyard. Oh yeah, you guys are gonna see in here I have a bunch of uh, half assembled sets that I've been like pilfering bricks from. Uh, I have some failed mocks in here <laughs> that's that have just, just made their way uh, into the death pile. But I have so many crates of brick to go through. You guys have no idea. I, I did this a couple of years back where I went through and sorted my whole collection. Previously, I had just random crates with just completely unsorted pieces. It was just like this, and I would just try to build that way, and obviously that's not practical in the slightest. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is fill up these little containers uh, with colored uh, different assortments, so like all the dark grayish things, all the light grayish, blah, blah, blah. And then once these get filled up, I'll take them over to my larger drawers and deposit them in there and then just keep filling them up. It'd be uh, it'd be pretty crazy if, if I got through this whole pile. I'd be really impressed if I did, but um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. But yeah, I think it's going to take me a couple of weeks uh, or uh, sorry, a couple of months worth of uh, <laughs> weekly streams to get through my whole collection and reorganize everything. Fan Star Wars has to go. Oh no. Well, thanks for dropping in anyway. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, what are you guys doing on this lazy Sunday? I mean, I know you're watching me sort Lego, but are you guys, uh, <laughs> are you guys keeping busy out there in the wide world? I know that, uh, coronavirus makes things a little more tricky as far as getting out there and doing stuff, but I hope everyone's at least putting on a mask and going out and getting some exercise. It's been huge for me. Um, hi, the Brickformer. When is your next fleet vid? Well, I've been kind of going back and forth on that because I have a lot of different individual ships that I want to do, but I don't like to do a whole video for just one ship. You know, I like to get a good chunk of update out there for you. So I have a couple of ships from the Phantom Menace that I want to make. Um, I really like the Chancellor's um, shuttle thing, which is only seen for a brief moment on screen. Um, but that's like a cool, like blue sort of luxury political ambassador yacht thing. So I like that one. So I, I might do a video on that because it's a pretty large ship, and if I can get it, if I can get it made, <laughs> I can do a video on that one. That might be worth a single video. But yeah, I'm just pondering. I have old Republic stuff that I want to do. I have uh, new stuff from Mandalorian that I want to do. There's there's so many directions I could take it. Honestly, the way that it works is I just kind of figure out. Like, what do I feel like building today? And then I'll just kind of theme a video around that. So, um, 
Anybody recognize this guy? This is from, this is from the giant uh, mini Hogwarts. That's a weird oxymoron, right? The giant mini Hogwarts. Um, since I shot it from my, the intro of my Harry Potter series, it can now be decimated. So <laughs> goodbye, Hogwarts. Uh, I have a half British, half American accent. I'm, uh, I've been living in uh, the US for 12 years now, but um, I was actually born in England, or sorry, I was born in South Africa and raised in England. So I have a, a mix of accents. You guys like my um, nightmare mug? It's like that awkward between Christmas and Halloween time. So everything has to be nightmare before Christmas themed. Uh, I'm glad that the sound is working okay, by the way. I had to get a new mic because the, um, the mic that I was using for my videos is one that hooks up to my phone and I didn't want to live stream off my phone. So yeah, uh, this is the first time I'm using this mic, so I'm glad that it worked out. Um, you can see this, this box right here, <laughs> which I'm using for gray bricks. Just about to fill it up right now with just these. There you go. That one's done. <laughs> Uh, let's see, what is your opinion on the new Mando set? I think it looks good. The only thing is, uh, if you guys have seen the episode, and I assume everyone watching has been watching Keeping Up With The Mandalorian uh, one way or another, um, it was cool, but I was really hoping to see the crate Dragon in the set, you know? <laughs> they have the, the ballista that um, the Tuscans were using to to shoot at the dragon, but they have no, uh, no dragon. So <laughs> that's the only thing I would have liked to have seen in there. And also, of course, Cobb Vanth and his um, his bike, his speeder bike that's made of Anakin's pod racer pieces. I think that would have been also a really nice inclusion. But I mean, it is what it is. I'll take any new Mando set. I do like that uh, Mando is coming in the uh, the Beskar armor finally. I'm, I was starting to think we were just going to get nothing but the brown armor for the whole time, for the whole theme. So that's nice. Um, hopefully Mando continues to upgrade his armor throughout the series, and then we can get different iterations of him. I think that'd be cool. I think the Razor Crest is actually one of the best Star Wars sets Lego did after years of not that good. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, well, I partially agree. I think the uh, the Razor Crest is a good set, but I think it, again, had a couple of weird design decisions in it that uh, I just don't know why they did it that way. Like, for example, uh, where is it? I actually have it around here somewhere. Um, yeah, I just, I didn't love the engine intakes on it. I think they look a little bit clunky. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know. I've seen a lot of really good mods of that set so far, so it's, it's pretty easy to do. I mean, they have the pieces um, to do really nice engine intakes. Sorry, I just dropped the piece. Um, yeah, like the pieces from the Poe Dameron uh, X-Wing uh, make for a really nice, engine intake, and I'm just confused as to why they didn't use those for the for the engines, because they look weird with that faceted uh, air intake thing. Uh, what's your opinion on the 5FS battle pack? Uh, awesome, but that's another weird one. So for a while now, I've noticed that LEGO has been um, oversizing their small vehicles, like, like um, speeder bikes and stuff. It really started, I think, with the sets for Rebels where it just felt like the, the speeder bikes were like at a different scale to the figures, you know what I mean? Like they look twice as big as you would expect. Actually, I'm gonna keep these together. Um, yeah, so then like it, it gives it this weird feel where it doesn't quite seem, it just breaks my brain when I look at it. <laughs> uh, sorry, I try to avoid spoilers from Mando, but uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't getting into, into anything too heavy. Just there's a creature in there that I would have liked to have seen included in the set, that's all. Um, but yeah, Mandalorian this season has been freaking amazing, right? I mean, dang, every episode, I don't want to get into like spoilers and stuff, but every episode has had like really good sort of lore and also lots of fun, like jokes and man, just really good, really good season. Uh, it's funny, like I'm old enough to remember when the, all the talk about Star Wars TV shows was going to be for that, um, right after the prequels were done. Uh, George Lucas was talking about doing a uh, like a live action uh, thing on Coruscant where it was like a crime boss show. And that was like, for years, they talked about how they're going to do the crime boss show. 
and uh, it never came to be. And then they, like, randomly a little while ago, there was some footage released of like what they were thinking of, and it's amazing to me how far the technology has come just since then. Because you look at how kind of basic that footage looked, that that test footage. It was, I mean, it was cool for TV at the time, but nothing like what we're seeing out of the Mandalorian. But of course, the Mandalorian, the budget on that thing is is gargantuan. So, you know, you you get what you pay for, right? And uh, Disney Plus is willing to shell out for the absolute pinnacle, top tier content for TV, and that's what we're getting. So, it's really, really amazing. I'm actually constantly stunned by the the look of what we're achieving on that show. It's, it's pretty incredible. Uh, do you think about making 007 mocks when the movie arrives? Mm. So, okay, James Bond is one of those weird things where, like, what would you really do other than what Lego's already done, which is like the Aston Martin, right? Once you have the Aston Martin, <laughs> you have like a James Bond minifig. I, I don't know, it doesn't really, it doesn't really uh, spark my imagination that much. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I'm loving the fact that this is my first live stream, by the way, and you guys are uh, showing up. This, this is rad. So I was always figuring that I would do a stream or two, maybe like two people would show up and then I could build it up over time. But hey, you guys are here. So thanks for showing up. Um, let's see. You should make Cobb Vance Speeder. I should, and maybe I will. Maybe I'm already planning to. <laughs> um, the thing was, as I was watching the episode, I was like, I got to make Cobb Vance Speeder real quick. And then I logged on to Instagram like 20 minutes later, and there was like 5,000 really good Cobb Vance Speeders already out there. Um, so that was like, ah, uh, man, everyone already did it, and they did a really good job on it. So do I really have anything to add to this? That's another thing you guys should know about me. I only like to build stuff that I feel like I can add something to. Um, my next like video proper for the channel is uh, is an, a kind of a modification of that recent Anakin's um, uh, Anakin's Jedi Interceptor set because those have been around for so long, and I feel like they've been basically the same for like ten years now. They've barely changed anything. And then I was talking to a friend of mine on Instagram who was saying that uh, they wanted to see a modification of it where it had like landing gear and. Uh, the R2-D2 was sitting down in there properly and all that kind of stuff that you see in the movie that they haven't put into the set yet. So I did a little set mod for that, but I finished up the instructions for it later today, but uh, I think that'll be out early this week. So you guys can look out for that one. But yeah, I think it's fun to to do something where it, it hasn't been done to death already. Like that's the reason I didn't do the Razor Crest is because before the show even came out, like Rich Boy J had an amazing Razor Crest, and then a week later he updated it and made it even more amazing. And there was like a thousand other really, really nice Razor Crests. So I was like, well, you know, it's been done. So I'll try to focus my energy somewhere else. I love that scene in episode three where Mando and Bo Katan are fighting against the Stormtroopers. Yes, very, very cool stuff. Um, we're going to try to stay away from too many spoilers on the Mandalorian here, but. I know you guys are going to talk about it in the chat, but try to be try to remember that not everyone has access to Mandalorian right away. There's some countries that are like months behind. But honestly, you guys, I mean, you know, you have the internet. <laughs> That's all I'll say. The internet exists. So <laughs> if you're if you're on the internet, you know that there are. Uh, well, I won't say anymore. But yeah, if you really want to avoid spoilers, there are ways to do that. That's all I'm saying. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm just, I think the, the bad taste that the sequels, um, seem to have left in people's mouths. I'm not one of those people, by the way, I love the sequels, but, um, I'm really glad that Mandalorian and also, uh, the video games too have been like finally getting some positivity in the community because I've been so sick of hearing people just griping about how everything Star Wars sucks. Disney sucks. New Star Wars is ruined. Go back to the prequels. Let George Lucas remake it. Like, I'm just tired of all that, you know? So it's been really nice to get some super high-end quality content that everyone can really rally around. Although people do still get mad about everything Star Wars related. Anyway, they find a way. People got mad about Baby Yoda and the, and the Lizard Lady. I don't want to 
say too much about that, but yeah, people were getting mad about that. And I was like, yeah, come on guys, come on. Just, just enjoy the good stuff. Um, how do you feel about Mandalorian game rumors sparked by Xbox? I did not hear about those rumors, um, but it seems like a pretty logical thing to do, right? I mean, we had Star Wars Bounty Hunter back in the day with Jango Fett, and it seems like if you just took that idea and made it a prequel to the show, just a Mandalorian Bounty Hunter game, uh, that would be pretty rad, I think. Haha, <laughs> we are pirates. I didn't say anything about that. Don't get me sued, please. I did not encourage anyone to do any piracy. Piracy is illegal. Tisk, tisk, tisk. The prequels were okay. Yeah, you know, honestly, like, <laughs> when I watched the prequels growing up, I went through this interesting emotional roller coaster where I would watch them in the theater. Absolutely love it when I watched it because I was like, you know, 12 or 14 or something when <laughs> Attack of the Clones came out. And I'm like, oh my God, that was so cool. And then I would think about the story a little bit when I walked out of the theater and I'd be like, wait, what? <laughs> and then things about it would start to bug me until like six months later, I would join the hate, the hate train. And I was like, I hate the prequels. They're terrible. But then, you know, the Clone Wars came out and the movies kind of got deepened a little bit by the Clone Wars. And then you start to rethink some things. And then after a while, you come back around and you're like, you know, they're actually okay. <laughs> And I think that's how most Star Wars things tend to work. It's like immediate love, then immediate hate, then acceptance. <laughs> it's like the, the phases of Star Wars fandom. Um, let's see. Did you catch the Lego Holiday Special? Yes, I did catch the Holiday Special, and I loved it. I thought it was adorable. And <laughs> you know what's funny? Uh, for you guys that haven't seen it, I won't, again, get into spoilers, but I actually think it's a cool, like, Star Wars story. I thought it added some uh, some nice bits of mythology to the to the saga, and I I actually was <laughs> got even a tiny bit emotional at one point, which for a Lego thing is pretty funny. Although I will say nobody seems to know what to do with Poe and Finn. I don't know what it is, but any Star Wars story after the uh, the Last Jedi, they seem to just the Poe and Finn are just there. I don't understand it. They're two really, really cool characters, but they never get to really do very much. And same goes for the holiday special. They kept that tradition going. The, the arm printing on Vader in the new sets, yes, that looks friggin' amazing. Uh, that is like, to me, that's the pinnacle uh, Vader figure now. That thing looks so good. Do you play GTA? I have played GTA. I'm, I My first GTA game was GTA 1, way back in the day on... <laughs> On, I played it on PlayStation 1. Uh, and then GTA 2, 3. Oh! Oh my god. You guys are hearing my dog right now. Someone's at the door. Um, yeah, I played GTA all the way up to GTA 5. But you know what's funny? I actually never completed GTA 5. Man. Hey, Parker. Shush. <laughs> yeah, dog bork. That's true. My dog's name is Parker. <laughs> so, someone's at the door. <laughs> um, yeah. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, GTA. Uh, so I have GTA 5, like, still sitting on my PlayStation 4, three quarters of the way completed. Um, something about the story got, like, so expansive on GTA 5 that I just never felt the need to finish it. Freddie says your dog gave me a heart attack. Me too, Freddie. I swear to God, Parker has taken 10 years off of my life just by his, his random barkings in the middle of the most inappropriate times. Like, my wife and I will just be sitting with our headphones on, both of us just chilling, doing our work. And then all of a sudden, bark, 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 and we just both jump out of our skin. <laughs> but I love him. I wouldn't trade him for anything. Uh, yeah, I did, uh, hello, I did do a live stream finally, and I'm glad that you're here. Hi. Yeah, I, the funny thing is I've done, like, fake live streams in the past, not fake in the sense I'm trying to trick you or anything, but usually I'll do a premiere for, um, a video that I feel pretty happy about, and I want to be able to discuss it live with you guys, but this is the first time I'm actually truly live, so you, you haven't missed out, you've made it to the first, uh, Two Bricks live stream that has ever been. 
Uh, I don't know if you like golf, but did you watch the U.S. Masters? Uh, I did not watch the Masters. I've uh, I've had like this funny relationship with golf where I used to watch it on TV every now and then, uh, back when I lived in England. And then for some reason when I came here, I never like had TV. I think something about American commercials just made me never want to have <laughs> TV. So just like as soon as streaming came out, I was like right on that straight away. But um, so yeah, I don't tend to watch a lot of like any kind of live sports anymore. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, I didn't watch the Masters, but I would have back in the day. Um, but yeah, I actually live um, right near a lot of large golf courses and it actually like super annoys me because I have this really, really tiny area that I can walk my dog in. And then this gigantic golf course that just takes up all the land. And I'm like, you know, I could use that land for stuff other than hitting balls. So I've become very embittered towards golf courses in my old age. Um, he challenged me to make Cobb Vance Speeder with Anakin's pod racer. Man, using just the um, just the pieces in the set, is that the challenge? That's a pretty good challenge, actually. Although that means I will have to dig out all the pieces from that set from, <laughs> from within my mess. Oh yeah, uh, you guys wanna see a failed mock? This is a failed mock right here. So I was out one day and I found this Duplo piece on the ground, just out in the wild. And I was like, you know, I wonder if you could actually make an, a decent looking Lego car out of a Duplo piece, just modify it. Uh, turns out, no, I didn't like it at all. <laughs> so I, I started on it and then I decided to dismantle it as part of this stream. So there you go, you guys saw the beginning and the end of that mock. Uh, what's your favorite build you have ever built? Oh man, so many good ones that I'm so attached to. I think it's still down to the T-Rex, uh, the Millennium Falcon, and currently Serenity. Because, oh man, but I got to put the Stinger Mantis in there too. Okay, every time I do one of those large sets, I'm so invested in it for so long that I, I basically just live and breathe that item for... A couple months at a time so i really really get attached to it so it's it feels like i'm betraying my babies to pick a few oh man i'm gonna get some more trays i'm like out of space okay you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna throw these orange pieces back because there's only two i'm gonna make this one my red tray over here uh let's see okay yeah thanks for tuning in uh tony scott go get rested and refreshed he is bald, right? Who, me? I mean, a little bit. <laughs> I, I still have some hair left. <laughs> uh, what happened to Brick Bros UK? I have no idea. Um, what did happen to them? Thing in the bottom right corner? Uh, my coffee? I think that's what you're looking at. Do I have any prototypes on my builds? Mm, not really. I tend to build, like the prototype tends to evolve into the final build. Like I'll, I'll just keep switching pieces. I don't like, I know some people build a full like sketch model and then they'll build a second separate model so you can kind of like compare and stuff. That's not how I tend to work. I tend to just make it, uh, yeah, I tend to just kind of keep perfecting the in, uh, initial thing uh, until it's done. Uh, top right corner. What, what are we looking at here? We're we looking at uh, stuff over here. Stuff over here. I got some stuff that I'm sorting. These are like containers of stuff I think you're seeing. And this is my mic right here. You're seeing a little, little bit of that. Uh, what's the spaceship thing in the top right corner? Wait, are you talking about up here? This stuff? You got the AAT and then Luke's Landspeeder. Is that what we're talking about? I'm so confused. I'm sorry. I don't know if this is flipped or anything in the in the life. <laughs> the gray thing. Oh, down here. This guy, right? Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, this was uh, the Avengers Quinjet uh, Captain Marvel edition. Um, the Architens update. Yes, that is coming fairly soon. The thing with the Architens that sucks is I have this one shooting area, so... I have to like take everything off. My micro fleet lives up here on this uh, set of tables that I've made. 
Um, it, so it takes a little bit of doing, right? So once I start on shooting for the architens, I kind of have to just keep it going until I'm done. So it's like a big time commitment. So I have like a lot of building I've been doing in my head, getting ready for when I actually do it, like figuring things out. So then um, I'm hoping to do it in the next week or two. But um, that's a big project, so I always knew it would take a little while. Um, I was never in any big rush for that. <laughs> you have a whole fleet because of my vids, Sebastian. That is very cool. Thank you. I, I love hearing stuff like that. When you guys are like creating the stuff that I make, it just it still blows me away that anybody would want to make the stuff that I make. So that makes me really, really happy. So thank you for telling me that. What is your favorite Star Wars set? Asks Danny Gill. Well, hmm. I think my favorite official set is probably... I think it's got to be uh, the UCS Slave 1 because that was the, the only set I think I've ever had where I didn't want to mod anything. I just got it, and it was perfect, and I was just put it on display, and it's been on display ever since. So I guess that's got to be my favorite. Um, yeah. I love I love that one. It was a great build too. Like I, I went around and told all my friends. Like I don't normally talk about Lego stuff, but I'm like, if you have money and you have the time, you should get the UCS Slave One. It's so good. Uh, do you know the difference between the Architens Cruiser and the Architens Command Cruiser? Yes. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of differences. So the Architens Command Cruiser is the uh, the Imperial version, and it has a slightly different shape on the hull. The engines are configured slightly differently. It has that armor plating around the engines. Um, there was, oh, I don't want to get into spoilers. Dang it. <laughs> I want to talk about Mandalorian stuff, but I keep, I keep reminding myself not everyone has seen it. Um, but yes, there are differences and I've been studying them as much as I can. Although, you know, sometimes it's hard like with, with Star Wars stuff, there's so many, uh, so many different sources and you're never sure who's exactly correct because everyone will say, kind of slightly different stuff. Like I watch Space Doc and they'll have a video about a ship and then Meta, uh, Meta Lord Nerds or whatever they're called will have a different video with slightly different information. And I'm like, ah, dang it, I don't know who to trust. <laughs> um, after you did the challenge thing, I said, I challenge you to make a mini Lego dinosaur the size of your current baby dinosaur models like raptors. Oh man, that's these are hard challenges, man. What, what are you trying to do? I like to try to make stuff that I, uh, that I that I'm in the mood for, you know, whatever, whatever the mood currently is, and it takes me in a certain direction. I'll just make something. Like I started getting all those Hogwarts sets uh, from the new Harry Potter relaunch, and I was like, I'm being taken in the direction of a uh, UCS Hogwarts, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, yeah, uh, Rex, the the next uh, Architens video will be pretty soon, in the next week or two. Um, the other thing is I have, so like a lot of Lego YouTubing is about just managing and juggling your time correctly so that you can like maximize the time that you have. Because for me, currently, uh, I'm on a little hiatus from work, but it's not a long one. Uh, it's going to end pretty soon. And I'm going to be back to working full time, uh, animating some crazy stuff. So then I have to kind of reassess, you know, I have less time to put into the channel. I have less resources. I have to kind of work around my work from home schedule, which is a little different. Parker is uh, my dog. He takes up a, a huge chunk of my day. So yeah, it, it time management is tricky. It's always been tricky for me. So I try to get the videos out as regularly as I can for you guys. And sometimes I just like, I'm bursting because I really want to start a new project. But then I'm like, ah, I know I won't have time to finish it. And uh, so it's, yeah, just even like now getting an update to Serenity out to you guys after like six months since the last one was like a huge deal for me. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, I did it. And then now I'm like, yeah, but now I'm gonna get the next one. I gotta finish it, you know what I mean? So like it just, it just never really ends. Uh, what kind of animation, uh, animation do you do at your job? Uh, I am a character animator for Walt Disney Animation Studios. So what that means is, uh, everything that a character does on screen that is movement related, uh, I'm responsible for that. Um, and yeah, I just I just started that job earlier. Uh, yeah, earlier this year, and it's been amazing, dream job. Uh, but yeah, of course I wouldn't trade that for anything. But 
uh, you know, it does make time management difficult, like I say, because with the pandemic, everybody's working from home and you create this situation where it's really easy to feel like you have a lot of time, but then to actually sit down and get stuff done when uh, you're like in your house <laughs> and it's your office as well. It, it, it can get tricky. Like uh, time management is, is hard, like I say. So um, yeah, uh, I'm about to start a project right now, actually. Oh, nice. Oh, you do uh, stop motion. Awesome. What kind of stop motions do you do, Brick Army Productions? Oh, wait, Brick Army Productions. I've seen your stuff. Duh, I don't need to ask. Uh, yeah, you guys have done some amazing stuff. I actually eventually, eventually, eventually want to do some stop motion for the channel as well. I, I actually have a whole um, series planned out <laughs> in my head. Uh, but again, that's, and I have done stop motion before. If you guys Google um, Black Stormtrooper 3, I think it's like Keisha and Jamal is the name of it. <laughs> it's a project I did with a friend of mine. Um, he's an actor, Donald. And Donald and I uh, built the sets and animated all the characters and I built a VFX for it. Um, that was some years ago. I think that was like 2012 that came out. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. But I, I really have a hankering to do more, more of that stuff. Um, yeah, Brick Army, I, I remember you telling me about your stop motion stuff a while back and I checked it out and I was very impressed. What are you, um, what's the theme of your next project that you're starting on? Sorry if you already said, I'm not super good at keeping up with the stream or with the chat. Oh man, I really do need some more trays. One second, I'll be right back. I'm back. I just had to grab some more containers for parts. That's the thing that's um, so hard about sorting Legos. There's so many colors and part types that you run out of containers to put them all in super quickly. I know you guys can't even see half of them right now, but they're all spread out all around the edges of the camera. Um, let's see. Ah, oh, something for Thanksgiving. Nice. Man, Thanksgiving uh, is going to be such a weird holiday this year because, like, literally with with COVID happening, like we're getting ready to watch, you know, hundreds of thousands of new cases. Sorry to get dark on the stream all of a sudden. Um, but I was just thinking about like, you know, everyone's missing their families. Everyone's gonna go home and see their families and you know, COVID cases are gonna go through the roof. And I'm just, I really, really hope everybody out there is gonna stay safe and do socially distanced Zoom Thanksgivings and stuff like that. Cause at the end of the day, you know, safety is, priority, right? Yeah, we want everyone to be safe. Okay, bye. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, Max. Um, yeah, it's it's just, it's such a weird time to be alive, right? 2020. <laughs> what a year. <laughs> uh, the Brick Form asks, will you do a room tour? Yes, I will. Um, right now, my room is a disaster zone because I'm working on like seven or eight uh, mock projects all at once, and each mock project uh, takes up a lot of room. And so I, I bring all my drawers out, all my different colors of trays, they're all spread out everywhere. And then I usually have a pile in the middle of the floor, which is like useful stuff for that particular mock. And then that pile tends to grow and get bigger <laughs> as I'm building. Um, this was a great little set, by the way. This uh, most recent land speeder. It got a lot of hate because we've had so many land speeders, but this was a really nice one. But um, it's going in the trash now. Goodbye. No, not the trash. It's getting separated. Uh, are you married? I am indeed. Happily so. Ta -da. It's been, uh, we just celebrated our 10 year wedding anniversary this year, actually. Uh, now, see this color. I have very little of this peach color right here, and I'm not really sure where I want to put it. I think I'm going to put it with all my tan stuff, but it kind of also resembles orange, so I don't know. It's a surprise to me to hear that you are such an amount of success. Oh, well, always the tone of surprise. <laughs> How did you manage that? Um, well, I mean, it's I've been uh, animating pretty much my whole life. As soon as I was able to get my hands on any kind of 
animation software since I was um, in high school. Uh, it's been a really long journey, actually. Like when I was living in the UK, uh, it was always I was actually in school for animation, and um, right at the time when Disney was shutting down production of all of their two D stuff, and it felt like the whole kind of animation industry was dead because nobody really understood about computers and how what an impact that was going to have. So it just kind of felt like they're canceling animation, right? That was sort of the mood at the time. So I was like, oh man, I really don't know what I'm going to do. And honestly, just ever since then, I've been just figuring out the different, uh, different animation um, avenues and parts of the industry that I want to be involved in. And I've just been really lucky. I've, I mean, I worked really hard, of course, but I've been really lucky in the sense that I've gotten to do some stop motion stuff, VFX, 2D animation, uh, really, my career has not even been that long. I've, I've only really been a professional for like 12, 13 years. No, not even that long, 10 years, really, uh, if you don't count school. And yeah, in that time, I've gotten to do a whole bunch of stuff. And then Lego has always been another thing that I just had as a hobby, and I've been building ever since I was you know, a wee one. Uh, I'm 36 now, sorry, 35. I know, lose track of my own age. And um, so I've, and I've been building since I was, you know, five or six years old. So there's 30 years of building experience right there. So it, it adds up, you know. Did I have a thing for gray bricks? Oh, man, I need another tray. Okay, I'll use this one. Uh, did you get the PS5? No, I did not. Uh, I still have so many PS4 games that are just sitting half complete that I need to get through. Like, I didn't even complete God of War. How pathetic is that? I mean, God of War is freaking amazing. I got like two and a half hours into it, and I had to stop and go do other things, and I just never got back to it. Same goes for Last of Us Part Two. I never got to finish that one. Um, nobody say any spoilers for Last of Us Part Two, please. <laughs> I know that that's a very polarizing game. But I was such a fan of the first one, I knew I had to, you know, I was obviously going to play the second one, no matter what. Um, but yeah, so I still have to finish all those before I invest in a PS5, and my PS4 still works fine, so... There's really no excuse for me to spend that money just yet. Um, probably in the new year, though. I'll, I w once I'm sufficiently bored of <laughs> trying to finish all the other games that I feel obligated to play, I'll probably get one then. Uh, do you prefer TIE Fighters or X-Wings? Mm, well, I think the X-Wing is one of the like great old-time sci-fi designs. You really can't touch the X-Wing. The TIE Fighter is very iconic, too, but it just looks so... like puny like it just looks like it would explode all the time which is what tie fighters are really good at so i guess i like x-wings better than tie fighters uh last of us is an amazing game yeah the the parts that i played i, I played the first again like i don't know two hours and um i really loved it so um even with all of the spoiler alert things that were happening uh, i still thought it was really really great um and then oh yeah the last game that i finished finished was Jedi Fallen Order because I felt just compelled to finish that story and I had a I had a little break and so I just powered through that like I I just played it nonstop until it was done <laughs> so that was great um, and then also the Insomniac Spider Man I finished that one that was really good. Um, sorry I keep touching the mic if you guys are hearing like big like <laughs> sounds I just kind of keep bumping the mic B wing or Y wing uh, Y wing that was a lot quicker of an answer but. <laughs> The B-Wing is, uh, is a really unique, weird-looking ship, but the, the Y-Wing is just classic, right? I mean, it's got those Star Trek engine nacelles on the side. It's got that cool, sleek cockpit up at the front. The B-Wing is, is an interesting ship, but the Y-Wing is... Come on. <laughs> uh, you know, the cool thing about this, too, is not only am I live-streaming and getting to hang out with you guys, which is really fun, um, oh man, we're just going to get into a Starship comparison uh, rabbit hole, aren't we? <laughs> um, but yeah, in addition to doing all this stuff and hanging out with you guys, which is fun, like I said, uh, I also get to be more efficient because I'll have parts on hand where I don't have to go scrounge around for... Uh, my, my parts collection has been really low the last couple of months because I've been just building and building and building like crazy and not getting that much new stuff um, and not taking apart any of my new stuff, so I have to like... I have to make a dent in it somehow. 
All right, so T85 X-Wing or TIE Defender. Um, I didn't really like the T85 design. It's okay. Um, but it just looks like they're trying to make a weird-looking X-Wing, like the, the S-foils and stuff, uh, up at the front of the ship. But I like the T70, the, the Poe Dameron, like the, the, the whole kind of sequel trilogy uh, X-Wings. Those look really cool to me. Um, let's see, Star Destroyer 1 or Star Destroyer 2. Uh, whichever one has the, the big raised like bridge thing that, that's flipped up, uh, I like that one better. I think that's the one I used in Rogue One. Um, who doesn't love completing things? Uh, yeah, I love completing things. I just I never have time. That's I've realized that people may think they know who their enemies are in life. Trust me, your only enemy is time. It's the guy that's going to get you in the end. Is that, is that profound? I don't think I was being profound. I think I was just being truthful. The more, the more I live, the more I realize that all you really need in life is more time. Uh, did you watch Star Wars Resistance? Yes, I did. Uh, I Again, I thought it was a really unfairly uh, maligned show. I thought that they put a lot of really great stuff into it. But then it ended so abruptly, I was just like, oh. Like, I, I don't know, I was just really just getting into the characters and really getting to feel like I knew them, and then the show came to an end. So I was like, all right, well, that's that, I guess. I think if they had carried it on for one or two more additional seasons, it would have been, could have been really special. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, Death Star 1 or Death Star 2? Oh, okay. Uh, well, Death Star 2 is bigger. We never got to get finished, so we never got to see its full destructive power. But uh, pretty sure it would have been uh, superior in every way to the Death Star 1, so I'm going to say Death Star 2. Um, what mini scale ships would you like to rebuild? Oh, uh, quite a few actually. Um, I've already been doing some of them. Uh, I really want to figure out a way to get the ghost, the to have like the phantom actually fit inside of it. You know, like I have, uh, I have separate phantom one and twos for that, but I really want to have them be able to dock. So that's gonna take some. And actually, on the subject of the ghost, people were telling me that the pieces that I had to use to get the hull shape on that one are so rare that they're going to have to spend like $100 or something to get um, to get this tiny ship. And I'm like, that ah, that's so frustrating. So if I could redesign that one, it would be to not use those pieces and also to dock with the Phantom 1 and 2. And also, my Nebulon B frigate is super weak and um, structurally around the base. So every time I walk past it, I break it and then have to rebuild it. It's a big pain in the butt. Uh, so I want to rebuild that one and make instructions for it because, um, yeah, I think that's a cool one. I think people would want to buy instructions for it because we didn't get the the UCS uh, set for that one. Remember they had a vote. Lego was like, which one would you like to uh, – Eva Productions, hello there. Uh, which one would you like to have as a UCS set? And everybody chose the um, – what do you call that? The Clone Wars gunship? Even though we've already had like 60 of those from Lego throughout the years. But everyone voted for that one, so no Nebulon B for us. Oh well. King's Knight is in the house. Hello, hello. Uh, everybody, King's Knight is the dude that made the uh, the shuttle that I reviewed not that long ago, the uh, NASA space shuttle. He's a very talented builder and a friend of mine. Everyone give him some love. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah, rebuilding my ships. Uh, so then I recently rebuilt the uh, Naboo Royal Starship, and now I really want to build some other Naboo Starships. And then that doesn't count as a rebuild, I guess. Um, oh, uh, Elian Zila, you're back. Hi, welcome back. Um, yeah, King's Knight wanted the UCS uh, Nebulon as well. Well, you know what, eventually, I will go ahead and do what I was saying and uh, redesign mine to be structurally sound all the way through and then also do uh, the instructions for it. That one, I, so that was a pre uh, two bricks channel build. I had that one built to put on my desk back when I worked at DreamWorks. And um, <laughs> for that one, I just made it, like I just wanted to have it. 
and I didn't really think about structural stability at all, except for the midsection. And then I completely let the rest of it go. So the, the whole bottom part of it is just nothing. It's just blah. So once I get a chance to redo that one, I think that'll be uh, a really nice piece for the fleet. Uh, when will we finish the architens? Well, finish, brr, I'm probably going to finish it uh, within the next month, I think, or two. Oh man, don't hold me to these things. <laughs> I'll finish it when I when I get the chance. Um, it's such a complex shape, like way more complex than you'd think when you first look at it, because you know, imperial ships just look like triangles. But then when you really look at the specifics, uh, there's a lot to them. So yeah, I don't know. It's coming along pretty well though. I'm pretty happy with where it's at right now. What are we doing? Uh, sorting Lego. I have this big pile of old sets, uh, half-completed mocks, um, things I've been pilfering from for months that I finally decided it's time to rip them all apart and sort them out. That's what we're doing. Will you do a micro-scale 501st battle pack? <laughs> uh, that would be fun. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll give you the instructions for it right now, okay? So for the, um, for the speeder, you're gonna wanna take a one by one gray uh, plate and there you go, you're done. And then for the uh, <laughs> for the ATRT, you're gonna wanna take a one by one uh, gray plate and put a one by one round plate on the bottom of it. And now you're done. Hey, congratulations, you've got your 501st battle pack. <laughs> Uh, I got four friends introduced you and they love you so much. Oh, that's so great. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys. And don't forget, uh, I've been saying it kind of here and there, but um, people are always surprised to hear. When I reach 100,000 subscribers on this channel, which I will do eventually because I'm just going to be around forever until that happens. <laughs> but when that does happen, I'm going to be building a 10 foot long uh, Venature class Star Destroyer that is going to be the pinnacle of my micro fleet. And I'm going to build it so I can take it to conventions and show it to you guys live when conventions are a thing that is happening again. And that's going to be amazing. So if you guys are super interested in the Micro Fleet series, got to get to that number because that's like once I reach that point, I know that I will be able to, uh, I know that I'll be able to basically afford the pieces because it's going to require a lot of purchasing. So that's the goal that I set for myself. That is right, when I reach 100,000. Hi, Simba. Um, yeah. So spread the, spread the love like, um, like you guys have already been doing. I'm actually, honestly, I never expected the channel to do as well as it has done. And I'm so, so surprised um, already that it's doing as well as it is. So really, thank you, guys. It's been, it's been just such a fun project. Like, Two Bricks was started as a as just a hobby, just to see like, I don't know, does anyone care about mocks that I build? I don't know. <laughs> and then it just became this really um, this really cool thing for me. So I really have I've had a great time, you guys. Thank you. Um, let's see thoughts on the new Masaizi Cantina. Uh, my thought is that I really really want it, but every time I look at it, it's sold out. I think it's. I think Simba makes a fair point. It's overpriced if you just look at just the the plastic that you're getting. But I think that um, they really, really went above and beyond with the figures to try to give us a, a really complete looking cantina scene. Because, you know, we've had so many little mini cantina sets over the years, but they've never given us all of the, the figs, right? That's, that's what the cantina scene is all about. So I think if you look at it in that sense, I don't think it's overpriced. Will you do a Breaking Bad mock? Um, I don't know. Breaking Bad's been off the air for like seven years or something. And it's kind of adult-oriented, and I like to do stuff that's uh, that's cool for everybody, you know? But I don't know. Maybe. That's that's kind of cool. Again, I've seen a lot of people do the uh, the Winnebago or the <laughs> whatever that thing is that Walter White uh, cooks his blue meth in. I've seen uh, several really good mocks of that, so I'm like... You know, is there anything for me to bring to the table where that's concerned? I don't know. You guys recognize this? This was Tiny Hagrid's hut. It's going now. Say goodbye, Hagrid. This cabin looks worse than it did at the end of uh, Half-Blood Prince. Let's see. 
Thoughts on the Bellator Dreadnought? Uh, I don't know what that is, so that's the only thought I have on it right now. <laughs> or Star Killer Base. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Elian, is it Elian or Elian? Yeah, you're you're getting you're starting to get the idea now. The the, the ships, once they reach a certain size, uh, they become impractical. So uh, a regular Imperial Star Destroyer, I don't think I would ever be able to do. It's going to be 13 feet long. That thing is ridiculous. Like, I'm firstly, I'm not going to do that to my wife. <laughs> she's going to be she's going to be very mad at me if I try to do that. But secondly, um, it's just like it's going to be a giant gray wedge, right? It's going to be a giant triangle. So eh, I don't really think it's that interesting. I think the Venator is super interesting because it has a really, really unique, weird looking shape to it. Uh, and it has like a massive opening docking bay at the front. So you can have all the little, the little tiny starfighters can be posed, like flying out of it. So I think there's a lot more fun to be had with that one. <laughs> yeah, goodbye, Hagrid. Uh, this was unexpected, a surprise, but hopefully a welcome one. Um, did you play Force Unleashed? I never did, actually. Uh, I I played so many of the PS2 era Star Wars games. I played Bounty Hunter. I played the Starfighter games. Um, and a bunch more that I'm forgetting. Oops. But uh, no, never did Force Unleashed. I think part of me was bugged by the idea of that story being canon, which it's not anymore, but the idea of like a secret apprentice to Vader that started the rebellion, I was just kind of like, nah, nah, I don't buy it. <laughs> it. Just, I don't know, for whatever reason, at that time I was just like annoyed by the, the concept of that, even though I had already bought into the idea of Ahsoka being Anakin's Padawan and I was totally fine with that. It's weird the things that our brains accept and reject, but. Yeah, for, for whatever reason, I did not play that game for that reason. <laughs> for whatever reason, for that reason. Um, that was the reason. Uh, I'm rebuilding a nano SSD that will hopefully scale with your Micro Star Destroyer. Nice. Uh, yeah, I really loved building the Micro Star Destroyers. And then I super quickly ran out of the pieces and then had the pieces that I wanted to scrounge and use for something else. And then so I put the Micro Star Destroyers on hold. Some people were interested in them, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like a huge plan, so I'm definitely going to swing back around and revisit those at some point. But um, yeah, for now, those are on pause. Uh, as is my uh, micro scale, um, my, what do you call it? Oh, my micropolis, people call those, uh, my, my tiny city. Um, it's on hold, but it's not gone. That is definitely going to get completed at some point. Um, I'm I'm still learning about how to be a mock maker. Like up until now, I've just been relying on <laughs> mainly the pieces from my sets, uh, which I've been taking apart and then making, transforming into new mocks. But now I'm getting into like buying specific parts and trying to be less resistant to that going forward because you know there's I don't want to be limited by just what I have on hand, obviously. So that's something that in the new year I'm gonna hopefully be branching out into more specific stuff. Oh, King's Knight, you have no idea. The rest of Hogwarts is going to be, it's going to be huge. And the the parts that I'm waiting on right now, I, I, I didn't realize I kind of messed up when I ordered the parts for it. Um, three of the orders were from the US and I have those now, but the last order was from Denmark and that has not arrived yet. Um, and I was like, oh man, is, it, is there going to be like quarantine issues with that? Like shipping stuff in and out of the US? I don't know if there is, but I haven't got it yet, so yeah. Um, Apollo, the Hogwarts build that I'm doing is at the scale of mm, playset scale, I guess you could say, whatever, like Lego system scale, but like the way that I do system scale, which is much, like, much more scaled up and more detailed and with like fully realized interiors and stuff. So think like what I did with the Millennium Falcon or the Stinger Mantis and what I'm doing with Serenity. So it's going to have really, really nice, like, lush, big interior space, uh, spaces, <laughs> spaceships, uh, uh, interior spaces where you can put all of your figures and, you know, act out scenes from the movies and such. So, yeah, kind of like a two bricks 
take on system scale. The Belter was a seven. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the planet, uh, the planet killer, right? Oh wait, no, that's something else. Never mind. Yeah, the I I, I feel like uh, the thing Tri Tritix is talking about is it Tritix? Yeah, um, the dreadnought. I think I saw a video on that on a one of those lore channels that you see on YouTube now that are so popular. Man, I I got into the wrong side of YouTube. If I could have just made spaceship lore videos, like you you got it made. I don't have to. I don't have to like build stuff and try to order physical plastic bricks. What was I thinking? I could just do some Google searches, pull some things off Wikipedia, put some images together, and create lore videos about. And then I can still talk about all the nerdy spaceship stuff that I love to talk about, but uh, without all the hassle of being a Lego mod maker. <laughs> what was your first Lego set? Ooh, I think my first proper Lego set was the Fireboat. Released in 1995, it was either that or it was the second-hand uh, Moonbase set from the 80s, the Lego Space uh, Moonbase that had the there was a little um, like a space monorail, I guess, on it <laughs> that kind of took you from this base on the one side, and it had those big uh, lunar base plates with the craters in it. I had that one second-hand. It was missing a few pieces because um, we got it at a yard sale. But I think that might have been my first official Lego set that I had. Other than that, I had just gotten a few like bits of loose brick from neighbors and yard sales and things like that. I think our first set was a small red delivery truck from the 80s. Nice. Yeah, I know I had gotten um, little impulse buy sets from like gas station waiting line or like at the supermarket, but I don't remember if those came first or not. Uh, but I do remember the Aqua Raiders base was my first like big splashy birthday present, or uh, sorry, Christmas present that I had like begged and begged and begged my parents for that, and then I actually got. Uh, that thing was so cool. <laughs> do you watch Man, M and oh, <laughs> I thought you were like misspelling Mandalorian. M and R Productions, yes. Um, yeah, I check out his stuff sometimes. Yeah, that guy's cool. He does a lot of videos. I can't keep up. Um, this year's been so crazy that I've just been like, I, there's so many channels that I used to follow religiously that I've just fallen off of because I'm so absorbed in watching like the news, and documentaries, and just trying to like wrap my head around everything that's happening in, in America. So <laughs> I've definitely fallen off of a lot of my hobby YouTube channels for sure. Uh, working at Disney, have you ever met or seen Dave Filoni in real life? I have not. I The closest I have come is I met, um, I'm friends with Donald Faison, who voices Hype Faison in Rebels. He's actually the guy that helped me with the, um, or his project was the, the Black Stormtrooper that I was telling you guys about earlier on. Google Black Stormtrooper 3, Keisha and Jamal, if you want to see it. Um, but yeah, he's a Star Wars voice actor, obviously. Uh, and then uh, I met Tia Sirkar, who voiced Sabine Wren at the dog park uh, <laughs> near where I live. And the funny thing is I didn't know what she looked like back then because I had only I'd been watching Rebels, but I didn't know, like... I had never seen her in anything, but I heard her talking because we were just talking about our dogs or something. And I was like, are you the voice of Sabine Wren? And she was like, oh my God, yes. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that's awesome. And then I, I told her to tell Dave Filoni I said hi and to tell him thank you for making Star Wars uh, super awesome again. So hopefully he got the message. Uh, Lightning Speed Bricks says, hi, dude. Hey, yourself. Thanks for being here. Uh, what's your favorite Lego Star Wars set. Mine was the Phantom One from Rebels. Oh, wow. That's just, that's a little set for it to be your favorite. That's pretty cool. Um, I was just saying earlier on, this question came up, and for me, it's the UCS uh, Slave One. But there have been so many good ones over the years. I actually really loved that first um, sequel era Millennium Falcon, the, the system scale one. Uh, even though when I look back on it now, it's got so many issues with it <laughs> as far as like... Um, the proportions and just the techniques and stuff. And I actually built my own system scale Falcon for that reason. But at the time that I got it, I was just so excited to see 
the Millennium Falcon, you know, back existing in, in a new Star Wars thing that like the thrill of that made it my favorite for a time. What's your least favorite set? Oh, that's easy. The Freemaker Adventures, uh, the Star Scavenger was a horrendous Lego set. I, I don't like to be negative usually, but when I was building that set, I couldn't believe that it was approved for final production. <laughs> If you guys ever got that one, I, I got it because I'm a completionist and I love to get all the figures and stuff. So I have all the Freemaker sets for that reason. But everything from the play features to the look, the building techniques, I just, it felt so weirdly amateur to me. I don't know. I, I did not like that one at all. But um, it had some cool pieces and I, I actually really liked making the mini Star Scavenger for my fleet. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that video, go check that one out. Um, I was actually really, really proud of that one. Um, can you tell us some microships planned for the fleet? Oh, yes. So yeah, the micro fleet has been kind of like the uh, flagship series, no pun intended, of the channel. And that is for sure going to continue into the future. But I really don't want to um, turn it into something frivolous. And I really want to make sure that I put those videos out when I have ships that are like worthy of building. So I have... Um, a long time ago, I reached out to EC Henry, who does a lot of like fan builds of ships. And he takes like, for example, he took some of the background ships that were in like Return of the Jedi and he fleshed them out because we've never really got to see what those look like. And he makes whole videos about his take on Star Wars vehicles and stuff. So I reached out to him and I said, can I turn some of your sets or some of your um, ships into custom mini Lego sets? And he said, sure. And he uh, gave me permission to use clips from his videos so I could illustrate what the original design looks like and stuff. So those are something I've been waiting to get into. I'm really excited about that because it's kind of like a weird, like these are real Star Wars ships, uh, but that just haven't ever really been explored properly, mostly because they were probably made in a hurry in the prop shop in like a couple of days on a really, really tight deadline where they just said, we need some background ships and they just kind of cobbled some stuff together. Um, but then, you know, somebody like EC Henry who's really talented and can use CGI to flesh those out and bring them to life. Uh, I think that's really cool. So I really, really want to do some of that. I also really want to do a lot of the Old Republic ships that um, I have a big list of those. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's so hard. Every time, the way my brain works is every time that I have an idea, um, I'll have six other ideas that are also competing for brain space. So I'll have to like push them aside and try to like do one at a time. So like with the fleet, there's so many directions I can go uh, at any one time. And I'm just like, I'm always struggling to, to try to see what I should do next. But yeah, we'll see. Whatever it is, it'll be good. Yeah, everybody should check out EC Henry and um, uh, his like, spiritual brother, uh, oh, heck, I forgot his name now. Um, oh man, EC Henry and the other guy that does really cool Star Wars space battle related stuff. Can't believe that's uh, skipping my memory right now because I, I watch his channel all the time. Um, will you ever release instructions for your micro star scavenger? Uh, oh, did I not do that already? Man, I thought I did that. Yes, Eckhart's Ladder, thank you. <laughs> EC Henry and Eckhart's Ladder make uh, a pretty cool uh, team. And also I love uh, Star Wars Theory. Um, so many good Star Wars related channels out there. Uh, Star Wars Explained is great too. Lots of really good stuff. Um, yes, I, if I didn't already make instructions for the Star Scavenger, I will do. I just really thought I had done that, but I guess now that you mention it, uh, no. Okay, well, that's one that's definitely on the list for sure. Uh, when will you make, uh, will you make a ATMNT mock? Oh man, which one is that? <laughs> oh wait, were you saying a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles mock? Is that what ATMNT is? <laughs> um, if so, I don't really know enough about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that like, I don't really feel that connection to it. Like, a lot of people have really nostalgia for, for the Turtles, but I never really watched them that much growing up, so I don't, I don't really know what I would make. 
Do you sort your Lego by piece type? Oh, okay, so here, this is what I do. So I have plate types by color, and then I have brick types by color, and then I have certain ones like I collect all the clips and uh, clip and bar and ratcheted pieces, and I put those in a separate thing. And I'm currently making a separate pile for brackets. So I have all these different sizes of bracket here as well. Sorry about the focus. Um, yeah, and then just like there's a, a few pieces typed like that that I keep separate, but generally I mix together uh, assort, uh, assortments of colors. Like in here I have uh, dark tan, medium nougat, light tan, uh, and there's some others. Uh, I think dark orange will go in there too. So yeah, that's how I kind of do it. They're, they're just sort of roughly categorized by color. And the reason that I do that is because when I'm building something, I found that if I have a lot of other pieces in front of me that I might not otherwise think of, it can spark a new creative decision. Um, so I don't like to separate them out by piece type because then I might not think to use a certain type of piece otherwise because it would be in a drawer and I'd have to actually think to go get it out. You know, So I, I do like to have a certain amount of randomness because it helps me be more creative. How much money do you get with this? Uh, not enough. I eventually would love it to be my full-time job, um, you know, down the line, way down the line. But uh, yeah, this is more of a hobby project right now that that helps to just generate a little bit of income to help to offset the massive cost of the Lego bricks. Uh, what the heck? There's MT and Walker in Star Wars. Uh, yeah, there are. Will you ever make something bigger than a 10 foot vanisher? No, I think to me that feels like the pinnacle, like any bigger than that and you're starting to break the Lego system. Uh, even that alone is gonna be a huge challenge structurally. And I, I really, I'm a purist, so I would never wanna put like structural, um, like a metal frame or anything in it. But if you go any larger than that, I think you kind of have to at that point. Funny story though, I actually did start on the Venator a while back in I guess what you could call an early prototype. I built the entire uh, bridge superstructure section. Um, and yeah, it was unbelievably massive <laughs> already. And I was like, I was kind of intimidated just looking at that and thinking about trying to finish the whole thing. But the thing that's cool about the Venator is that you have like a top wing surface and a bottom wing surface. And then inside of it, it's basically hollow, right? And then you have this hollow space on the inside for the um, uh, the hangar bay kind of interior. But the rest of it can just be a frame that supports this big kite shape. So really, like once you crack the internal structure for that, um, you, you're basically clear to blow this thing and go home. But I mean, obviously, you need to still buy hundreds of thousands of pieces <laughs> to make the the actual wings. But yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be huge. Um, and it's gonna have a massive dense technic structure on the inside. And I think it's gonna be made in four or five sections that will all be able to come apart because I'll need a place to store it and being able to store it not all in one piece is gonna be essential. So there's a lot of considerations with that that I've already already been thinking about uh, a lot. Uh, when you organize your pieces, do you start by breaking down sets you own, or do you buy pieces separately? Oh, um, a bit of both, yeah. I, I like, I've been recently getting into buying specific pieces that I need uh, more. It's just a pain because with BrickLink, you don't always know for sure if you're gonna get the exact parts that you need. Like, I'm, I tend to be very specific about the parts I use for, um, for like, say for example, let me see if I can find an example in here. Do, 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 do. One second. Oh, yeah. So this is a standard jumper piece, right? And on the back here, uh, I don't know if you guys can see, it has the hollow, uh, uh, the hollow thing in here with the, the like clutches that go around the stud on the edge. There's no uh, interior stud, anti-stud um, on the back. Uh, so there's like three different types of jumper pieces like this, but I almost always use this type. But when I order them on BrickLink, I tend to get the wrong type. And the problem is 
there are certain things you can do with that piece that you cannot do with the other variations. So it becomes a real pain in the butt. If you're ordering thousands of pieces at once, you've got to check them all, make sure that they're the right ones. And if they're not, you've got to send them back. And it's a whole thing. So I do tend to prefer the um, set buying model. But after a certain while, it just becomes impractical to do that. Uh, Eva asked, did you see my question? Uh, well, sorry. What was it? Sorry, I missed your question. Ask it again, and I'll look out for it this time. Um, yeah, it's hard to like concentrate on sorting and also follow the chat at the same time. Um, excuse me, quick gulp of coffee. I don't know why, but in the wintertime, I start to really crave black coffee. In the summertime, I want creamer in my coffee. It's just one of those weird things. The cold makes me crave the bitterness of the uh, black coffee. Fun fact, Gozanti in Mandalorian is a little bit different from the line of Rebels. It is. And what I like about uh, live action Star Wars is that they're not afraid to change up the designs of things uh, when they bring them into live action. Uh, because each, each thing, each new Star Wars thing is an interpretation of a universe that we've actually never gotten to see. That's the way I like to think of it anyway. So when you're seeing the animated stuff, you're seeing the animated interpretation of a real place that exists. That's how I like to think of it. So then when stuff looks weird or different, or like, say, Anakin and Obi-Wan can jump two miles in the Clone Wars, but... Uh, Obi-Wan has trouble jumping 16 feet in the live action one. In my mind, it kind of like balances out as to being the truth is somewhere in between. And that's what I like about Star Wars is that even something like the holiday special, as wacky and cartoony as it is, it's like the Lego take on that universe and the real truth of that story, the real truth, uh, lies somewhere in the middle. Um, let's see. Eva, did you ask your question again? I really want to answer it. No, I don't see it. Okay. Oh, I uh, wanted to make a resistance ground vehicle, but I don't know what to make. Uh, a resistance ground vehicle. They didn't really have any, huh? The resistance had like a very, very limited amount of fleet. Uh, unless you're talking about resistance, the TV show. Um, yeah, it's already been an hour. Crazy, right? Oh, what is my current rarest Lego minifigure? Uh, I will go get it and show you. Um, I'm thinking about your question. Resistance ground vehicle. Uh, so this is my current rarest Lego minifigure. It is the Darth Vader with the uh, built-in light-up lightsaber. And you guys are never going to be able to see the light. It does work, but it's so faint. But yeah, these old things, when you push the, uh, the head down, the lightsaber lights up. The thing that sucked about these is that you couldn't do anything with the hands. They're just like molded in to this big chunky lightsaber piece. It looked cool when it's lit up, but you know, that's it. But uh, yeah, this thing still cost me an arm and a leg, but it's probably easily the, ra uh, the rarest one that I own. <laughs> Gotta remember to put him back on the wall later on. He's very, very expensive. All right, let's see. So, um, yeah, what well, you were saying about you with uh, making a resistance, uh, you're talking about from episode seven to nine. Okay, so really the only thing we got to see of the resistance ground forces was something like their little, um, like little runabout transports that go around the base, refueling and taking people around. It's kind of sad, really. Um, they never got to have like a resistance, like, tank or speeders or anything like that, really. Yeah, I, I don't know. That is a tricky one. Oh, you have a phase two Captain Rex. Nice. The stream is a little bit blurry. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I guess the pieces here are a little bit out of focus. Uh, this camera is pretty, pretty dodgy, and uh, <laughs> it's just a webcam, so I'm not really sure how to manually focus it, but I'll have that fixed for the next stream. Uh, oh yeah, the ski speeder. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't even really a resistance vehicle, right? They just found those in an old abandoned rebel base. 
It was actually a great uh, comic. Um, I highly recommend the Marvel Star Wars comic line, by the way, if you guys are uh, fans of Star Wars. Um, but yeah, there was a great comic where after the... Uh, it was between uh, A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. Uh, they were looking for a new base, and they went to the base on crates to try to figure that out. So oh, there's a weird sound happening. There's people doing construction next door, so we keep hearing these odd sounds. I don't know if it came through on the stream. Um, yeah, but I highly recommend the Star Wars comics. Bo show. Um, oh, you got the Silver Stormtrooper. I missed that one. That's like on my to-do list. What's the smallest ship in the fleet? I'm guessing it's the Imperial tank. Um, I think so, yeah. I mean, piece count-wise, uh, it's either that or the um, the Vulture Droid, which is just like two clips and a round plate. <laughs> so it's it's definitely between those two. Uh, what do you do working for Disney? I am an animator. So I'm, I make the characters move. Um, and that's why Lego is such a fun counterbalance to my day job because I'm taking models and I'm making them move for my day job. And here I'm building models from scratch. So that's, you know, that's digital. This is physical. It's just kind of like the perfect offset for me to be, to be creative, but also to let my mind just kind of go blank and just build. The jungle hopper, that's right. That thing was really tiny as well. That actually might be the smallest one in the fleet. You're right. Uh, that one was just like a binoculars and, uh, and a one-by-one -one plate. <laughs> Honestly, that one's really more of a joke. Uh, it probably doesn't even really count as a ship, you know. I mean, it does, but whatever. Uh, what's your opinion on the 2003 Clone Wars General Grievous? Uh, well, there's a kind of a funny history about that because at the time that they were making Clone Wars, George Lucas was still kind of workshopping General Grievous, like what he was all about. So he was this super badass ultimate warrior kind of guy. Uh, and he got introduced in the Clone Wars season one finale. Sorry, another gulp of coffee. Live streaming makes me thirsty. Um, and he was introduced as like this unstoppable force. He killed poor Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, which, harsh. Um, and then when season two rolled around, George Lucas was like, yeah, actually, um, General Grievous is like a cowardly, like, nothing character. <laughs> so I'm going to need you to just like change what you guys did for season two and just make it fit. So then they had to make in, in this kind of weird, like, pivot with his character where he was like training and um, Count Dooku was telling him that he had to be like, he had to basically run away from every fight <laughs> instead of instead of stand his ground. So yeah, that was, he started off awesome and then he got lame pretty fast. I think um, the, the CG Clone Wars, he's pretty consistent to the movies, you know, obviously because that was made after the movies came out. Um, the ghost is also very small. Uh, no, the Ghost is a pretty big model, actually. Um, I mean, big is relative when we're talking about the micro fleet, but, but yeah, no, that one's pretty big. Uh, hey, Simba, you need to go now, but that's cool. Thank you for joining in. It was nice to see you. General Grievous destroyed everything in his path in 2003. It's true. He was, um, he was an absolute uh, beast. And then I guess, so they made it so that um, Mace Windu used the force to crush General Grievous's chest uh, in season two of the uh, 2D Clone Wars, and then that's why he was kind of weak. So that was supposed to kind of explain some of his lameness in the movie in comparison. I mean, you know, General Grievous still got to have, like, some cool fights. He got to do that spinny fight with Obi-Wan, but he was definitely not the same guy that we were introduced to in that first episode of the Clone Wars. Uh, you know, his first appearance in that. Um, what did you animate? I have worked on uh, several films now. Let's see. I worked on How to Train Your Dragon 3. That was at DreamWorks, not Disney. Uh, I worked on a movie called Everest. And I recently worked on Disney's upcoming Raya and the Last Dragon, which is going to be in theaters in March. So you guys can check that out if, you're, if it's safe to do so. Um, yeah, I've had a really, really amazing, super fun career. And everybody thinks 
like whenever people hear that I work for Disney, they're like, oh, okay, so you have all the inside info about like Marvel and Star Wars, and like, no, I mean, no, no, none of that. Those companies are all completely separate entities, and we don't all chat around the water cooler like, oh, so um, I heard you guys are going to kill Luke Skywalker in uh, the Last Jedi. Awesome! Like, <laughs> there's none of that. <laughs> Um, yes, that gave him his cough, Oliver. That is correct. Yeah, when, when Mace Windu crushed General Grievous, that was meant to be why he coughed. Um, how long will you be live for? Well, I was thinking about going until 2.30 today. Uh, this is my first ever stream, and I'm not really sure about the, you know, I wasn't really sure about the format and how it was going to be, and if you guys would get uh, super bored of watching me sort Lego, so I thought that would be a good time to call it. Um, but yeah, if you guys think a longer stream would be better next time, maybe we can make that happen. See, the problem is, uh, if this was my day job, I could just be like, cool, this is like, uh, this is my day job, so I'm going to block out my morning to just do streaming. But currently, I'm on my free time, quote, quote unquote. And so I have other stuff I need to do as well. So a two hour stream felt like a good long amount that could, you know, let me still have a day, uh, and, but also get some time to hang out with you guys. Um, he's trying to cover up his secrets of Marvel and Disney. Uh, yeah, I get my, my Disney, uh, hype checks. You know, it's funny, um, because I love the sequels. Um, I, okay. I love the sequels, but I wasn't super hot on, uh, Rise of Skywalker. I mean, it's my least favorite of the three, but when Force Awakens and The Last Jedi came out, I spent so much of my time just yelling at people online that were like deliberately misinterpreting or misunderstanding it. And then people were starting to accuse me of being like a Disney shill, which is hilarious, right? Because anytime you like something, now you're accused of being a shill. Um, and they're like, oh, bro gets his Disney checks. But then I actually started working for Disney, and I was like, oh, man. If anyone clicks on my Facebook profile and sees I work for Disney, they're going to be like, I knew it. <laughs> so, so I had to <laughs> stop yelling at people about Star Wars on the internet when I started working for Disney because I didn't want to get accused of anything. Uh, I only joined 20 minutes ago. Nice. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, um, I. it's honestly so weird to me to ever hear people say that they enjoy my, my builds because I really just make them for myself. And I just, I don't know. It, it It's just such a, a bizarre thing, like being a, a public uh, person with my Lego stuff, which is like my little hobby thing. But I, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, Lego is just such a fun thing. And I just love that you can be so silly with it and you could just make oh, this little duckling thing. The first, uh, the little chick came with that Easter egg set. Um, you can just be like super silly and have a lot of fun and not take yourself too seriously. And that's, that's what's great about Lego, man. Everything takes itself so seriously nowadays, you know? Lego's just like, nah, we're just gonna be silly. Uh, the mass has too much money to burn. They might as well make a solo series. That would be cool. I mean, the funny thing is you'd be surprised, right? When people think about these massive corporations like, like Disney, they just assume like everyone is just smoking hundred dollar bills for fun. <laughs> but the thing is most of that cash that they have quote unquote, isn't actually cash. It's all tied up in investments, right? So they have to think very carefully about like, and this is just me in my opinion talking about the way, I'm not a representative of any corporation, but um, they still have to think very carefully about their investments because, you know, a lot of their um, decision-making is based on projected income from future projects, right? So say, say they devote $300 million to a movie. If that movie bombs, that money's gone. They're not just getting that money back, right? And so everyone assumes like, well, they can just make whatever they want. Why don't they just give us what we want? Well, a lot of times they have to do these super complex calculations of what will sell, what will do well in a certain region and yada, 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 and all that kind of stuff. And so that kind of, you know, it's a bummer that they have to do it that way. But when you get stuff like The Mandalorian, where they're spending an unheard of amount of money on that show to make it look the way it does, then you kind of have to like give them some credit for taking even a little bit of creative risk with that show and not just making it the most safe thing ever, right? Because it's 
incredibly expensive. <laughs> um, have you heard of the ATMP? No, I have not heard of that one. ATMP. Is that an all-terrain missile pod? What is that? What is that snow speeder? Oh, this is the one. <laughs> this is the Junior's snow speeder, which I got for the, uh, the figures. And it has this big one piece hole right here that I am not a huge fan of. Probably find a way to use that piece somewhere. But um, do you get a lot of money with animating? Um, I mean, yeah, I do okay. Yeah, it's, I definitely get more money than I used to when I worked at the Lego store. Ah, you guys didn't know I worked at the Lego store, did you? It's another, uh, <laughs> it's another cross promotional nightmare. I used to work at a, a Lego retail store. Um, is it just me or would a movie like Solo about Captain Rex's journeys be so badass? Yes, it would be. The problem is uh, Captain Rex is really well known to fans of the animated stuff, but uh, translating him into live action, a lot of people might not know why they should care, right? So I know a lot of people who watch The Mandalorian and some of the characters who've showed up this season, they're like, oh, that was a cool someone. I don't know. I don't really know who they are, but yeah, cool. And I'm like, ah, you don't know all the history and the lore and everything. Like, so it's hard for them because you don't want to just sit down and have a two hour recap of this character's history. You want to jump into the action, but also you want people to understand how special that character is. So with somebody like Rex, it's kind of a, a tricky thing to, to bridge, right? They could get away with it with Darth Maul for the um, the solo little cameo there because people are already familiar with him from the movies. But even that, I think, confused a lot of people. All-terrain missile platform. Oh, I was close. I said missile pod. <laughs> he has so many jobs, he can write a book about it. I could. I've had a lot of jobs. I haven't had a ton of careers. I've mainly had an animation career, but I have had a lot of jobs. That's true. Uh, make Solo 2 happen. Absolutely. Hashtag Make Solo 2 happen. If you guys want that movie to exist, go uh, harass everyone on Twitter about it. Go tweet about it, make videos about it, make lore videos about how Solo was so awesome. And if the interest is there, I'm sure it will eventually happen because I thought Solo was super underrated. I thought that um, even like with Alden Ehrenreich, not exactly nailing the solo character or the the kind of Harrison Ford attitude I thought it was still a really really enjoyable film so I would like to see solo 2 happen especially because it left on this big cliffhanger and Star Wars doesn't normally have big cliffhangers that are left unresolved so I think that'd be cool one thing you guys can do is if you liked the music in solo they just released uh, I saw John Powell tweeting about it uh, they just released the extended uh, soundtrack and you know any anything that's related to solo that you guys consume shows that there's an interest for that property. So that is a way that you can help make that happen. Man, I still, despite all of my trays here, I'm still running out, and I have I'm running out of space to put all these pieces. I'm kind of regretting making this. I'm kind of regretting making this pink door since I don't have a lot of pink. <laughs> Maybe I'll dump that one out. There needs to be a bridge between young, optimistic Han and the cynical Harrison Ford Han. Yeah, I think so too. Um, they tried to give us a little bit of that with Kira and Beckett, um, but you still didn't get the full sense of the of the cynicism, right? It was he was like halfway there, but still, he was still very optimistic by the end of that movie. I feel like. Um, how big would a Star Destroyer be in your fleet? At least thirteen feet long. Uh, maybe a bit bigger. So, too big. Uh, what is your favorite Star Wars character? Oh, man, that's... Star Wars is like this giant tapestry. And it has so many parts and so... Like, there's no main character of Star Wars. That's why I love it so much. I don't know. It's A lot of people are just immediately like, oh, Luke Skywalker. But, like, I don't know. There's, there's so many great characters. I think Ahsoka's one of my favorites, for sure. Um, she's had such an awesome history. Um, I actually really loved uh, Ben Solo as well. I thought he was easily the best character in the new uh, trilogy. Well, I like him and Ray. I like their dynamic. 
Do you remember a meme of Jim Marceau and the TIE Fighter? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, the Rogue One had such a strange marketing campaign um, where they showed a bunch of stuff that wasn't in the movie and they knew it wasn't going to be in the movie. It was, it was really weird. I'm like, why advertise something and get people hyped about it that you know <laughs> isn't going to be there? I, I'll never quite understand that. Check this out. I got a broken clip piece. Pour one out for broken clip piece. Poor guy. How do you guys feel about broken Lego, by the way? Do you do you keep those pieces? Do you do you try to integrate them, like hide them in your mocks, or do you discard them? <laughs> yeah, RIP. Exactly. Um, I tend to hang on to them, even though I never end up actually using them for anything. But sometimes I'll put in an order from Lego of like for replacement parts, because they'll send them to you for free um, if they're still in production, that is. But the one thing I wanted to get that I really wanted to get, I never was able to get from Lego, which was a Finch Dallow minifigure. Do you guys know the story of Finch Dallow? Uh, Darth Vader at the end of Rogue One, a Rouge One, was like General Grievous. Yeah, that's true. They presented Darth Vader like this unstoppable force in that movie. Uh, I thought that was cool. Um, I throw them away as soon as I notice a crack when I'm fumbling around. I just don't have the patience for a broken. Yeah, oh man, broken brown. I have so much broken brown, you guys. I don't know if you remember, one of the first earliest videos I did for the channel is how to try to not break your brown pieces because I was breaking so many of them. And I was in the middle of building like massive scale brown mocks. Like I had the, the, uh, the dropship from Phantom Menace and it's all brown and I was just breaking so many pieces. It was so frustrating. Um, let's see. What's your favorite Star Wars walker? Um, well, a lot of characters in Star Wars walk. You know, most of them have legs. So they turn, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I think the classic at, -AT can't be beat. That, that to me is the ultimate walker. Um, although it's pretty closely tied with the ATST. Those are both I mean, those are classic walkers from my childhood, so. Um, yes, okay, so Lego Finch Dallow, that whole thing. So it was super frustrating. So I think what ended up happening is Lego had the concept drawn up for the, uh, for the bomber uh, from the beginning sequence of The Last Jedi. And they had this character in there that was just an unnamed generic pilot or bombardier, and then when the movie actually got done shooting, they had a specific guy that was highlighted in the movie, which I think was not initially the plan, or maybe maybe it was, but Lego wasn't aware of it. But anyway, that guy's name was Finch Dallow. He only got like 30 seconds of screen time and got blown up. But, uh, but the set came out with the uh, initial uh, figure, which was the light-skinned character. And then halfway through the production, they switched to Finch Dallow the named pilot. Uh, so half the people who bought the set got the original one and half got the other one. And the other one, the Finch Dallow became super duper rare in, like immediately and people were charging like $300 for a Finch Dallow. And I was like, I don't want to spend that much money to get that one figure. So I tried to reach out to Lego and see if I could get that figure because I, I got the original set. And they said no, unfortunately. Um, what was the first Star Wars movie you watched? Uh, that would be The Phantom Menace. I actually never watched classic Star Wars. Oh, I have a gaffy stick right here. I never watched uh, classic Star Wars growing up. Um, only once I saw The Phantom Menace did I go back and get into the other movies, which I was like, oh man, these get way better. <laughs> um, yeah, why spend the money? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I am going to have to spend that money eventually because my plan is to get every single Star Wars figure ever made. So I... I personally do need to spend that money, but uh, regular people who are not insane like me don't have to. <laughs> and you shouldn't have to. It's like the, the whole um, Lego scalper market where people are just buying up stuff immediately and selling it on for ridiculous prices. It, it makes me so mad because Lego is supposed to be something that's enjoyed by everybody and scalpers make everything so much more difficult, you know? Um, yes, so, oh, the Great Hall, yes. I'm working on the Great Hall right now. The design is done. The instructions are halfway done. And I'm waiting for the pieces to come in, the final shipment, to put together the physical model of the Great Hall and uh, show it to you guys. 
So that one's going to be in the next few weeks. Um, I hope. I'm, I'm just kind of waiting on that order. So I'm at the mercy of the US Postal Service. So who knows? Um, I got a recommendation on Jurassic Park that showed an episode called Double Trouble and reminded me of the fact that the Indominus Rex killed its sibling. That is true. Uh, they actually made a little story about that, about the <laughs> killing, the, the dinosaur killing its sibling. It's pretty messed up. It's like, a, imagine pitching that story. Yeah, so I, I got this story I want to tell. It's about a dinosaur who kills its brother. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, let's see. I got. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks. I really uh, love those mocks. Hey, awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah. The I really really hope to have the Harry Potter series like up on its legs properly. The ones that I've done so far are kind of like teasers for the the big show, which is you know the Great Hall and all the other parts of the castle. Um, but don't expect those to come out like every other week because um, I have I don't have near enough. Uh, pieces to make, you know, in the right colors to make the great hall and all that other stuff. So each time I do a new section of the castle, I'm going to be kind of doing a combination, which I never have done before, actually, uh, of designing physically with the parts that I have, but like switching out the colors to be like rainbow colored, and then translating it into digital with the correct colors, ordering the parts, et cetera, et cetera. So more of a traditional like mock maker's approach, um, just because I just don't have that much. Um, of this kind of stuff, tan archways and things. I'm, I'm getting more of it, but not nearly enough to do the whole of Hogwarts. So that one's going to be a little bit of a slower series than I'm used to. What set do you want LEGO to make the most? Um, I really want to see, what is it called? Um, I really wanted to see the uh, Stinger Mantis, like an official LEGO take on it. I had to make my one because Lego never gave us one. Uh, I really wanted to see the crate dragon uh, from you guys know what. Uh, and then um, there's other ships, like so many other ships that I just feel like we, we need to get those. Like I really wanted the Nebula on B. Uh, I really want some other rebel support ships. There's so many like capital ships that I think could be made at that scale. And I really want to see more locations too. I would love to see a Camino cloning facility. I'd love to see a Jedi Temple. Um, so many, so many exciting locations, sets, things that they could get onto if they really wanted to. But the thing is, right, Star Wars, everybody loves X-Wings. Everybody loves uh, all those classic things, right, that we keep getting over and over again. And Lego has to keep producing those because new kids keep coming along that uh, were too young to get them when they were first on the market. So they have to re-release it so that those kids can get the classic things that they want. And then they kind of pepper in a few interesting things along the side. So it's tricky. I, I understand that the problem that LEGO has where they can't just do like weird esoteric one-time uh, scene locations and ships and things because A, they wouldn't sell and B, like I said, they need to crank out all the classics for everybody over and over again. But at least I think we could see some more variation. Like uh, Anakin Jedi Starfighter came out and was basically unchanged from the previous version. I, I would at least think uh, with all the new pieces that exist, uh, I would like to see bigger leaps forward in, in design to at least justify uh, re-releasing those sets. Did you ever buy Lepin? No, and I never ever will. In fact, Lepin stole one of my sets, uh, one of my designs. If you go on the Lepin website right now, you can see my Millennium Falcon being sold by them with their fake, cheap, uh, bad quality bricks. And that annoys me no end. <laughs> I will never stop being annoyed about that. But you know, there's nothing I can do. I don't have a legal team behind me the way that Lego does. I can't go sue them to tell them to take away and blah, blah, blah. But no, I. the thing that sucks to me most, like, I don't really care that much that the bricks aren't that great. I mean, whatever, right? It's They're just plastic bricks. But the fact that they, they don't design anything themselves and they just steal the work of other artists and designers, I think that's what I can never get past with Lepin. Like, just hire some guys and make your own stuff, man. Like, it's not that hard, you know? 
The thing is, um, oh, and Danny Gill said sue them. Well, I can't sue them because A, that design, I mean, it's a, it's a Millennium Falcon, so it's not something that I created to begin with. So I think I'd have a, a tricky time right off the bat. Um, and then B, they're in China, right? And the cost of trying to pursue legal action overseas uh, is without, it's outside of my means to do that. And, you know, the Millennium Falcon is a set that I sell the instructions for for 15 US dollars. It's not like this huge money spinner, right? So uh, oh, I want to show you guys these. Um, these accidentally got mixed in here, but uh, can anyone guess what these are going to be for? They got uh, accidentally thrown into the pile here. <laughs> Guesses in the chat. Um, but yeah, you know, Lepin, Lepin sucks, and they're going to do their thing, and they're going to keep existing. And now that they can't steal LEGO's designs anymore, they're stealing fan designs, which, again, is a huge, it's a huge shame. But what can you do? Uh, can you make an Avenger tower or the helicarrier in miniscale? Man, you know, that's another thing. Like, Avenger stuff, I never, or like MCU things, I never really got into like the designs of those things too much. Um, I, I really like the movies in general. I like a lot of the themes and the characters are all really great, but the actual designs, they don't really stick in my brain. Like when I try to picture the helicarrier, I have a hard time visualizing it, you know? So if, I think for that reason, I've never really thought too much about doing mocks from, from those movies. But um, yeah, I think maybe down the line. Burn them down. No, I don't advocate for any kind of terroristic activities against uh, fake Lego brands, but it is really frustrating. I, I will say that. I, I'm not happy that they did that. Uh, if you could remove a character from Star Wars, who would you choose? Oh, man. <laughs> that's, that's a tough one. Um, you may be surprised to find out that I would not remove Jar Jar Binks. I actually think he's a, an okay character. Um... The reason I think he's okay is because, to me, when I don't know if you, any of you guys feel this way, but when I'm watching the Star Wars movies and I see how irritated everyone gets with Jar Jar, I'm like, that's the point of him, right? He's, he's frustrating, and everyone comments on how frustrating he is, and that's why he exists. If he was as annoying as he is, but everyone loved him anyway, I would hate his guts. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, yeah, that's an interesting... Conundrum. Who would I remove? Uh, I would remove, I know who I'd remove, 99s, or ni 99, the clone. Uh, if, for those of you guys who don't know, the clone 99 was a janitor on Camino, and he had literally the saddest scene in all of Star Wars. <laughs> and so to, to save myself the pain of having to have seen that scene, I would remove him from canon. <laughs> yeah, it's it's too sad. I can't take it. Like every time I get to that episode, I have to skip it. It's it's just too much for me. Um, yeah, Jar Jar is there to serve the purpose of being annoying for sure. And also, you know, he's the one who sets the galaxy down the dark path by. Um, okay, yeah, heavy too. Oh man. Um, Jar Jar, you know, gives, because he's a dum-dum, he gives power to Palpatine and lets the whole galaxy fall into darkness. So he definitely did serve a purpose within the story, for sure. Also, um, can I just say, like, in The Phantom Menace, Senator Amidala says, I call for a vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valorum's leadership. Why didn't they just do that again when it came to Palpatine? <laughs> I mean, I understand that he's a dictator and he would have found a way around it, but like no one even tried it, right? You'd think Padme would get up in, in episode three and Palpatine is cackling about how he's going to reorganize the galaxy and be like, I call for a vote of no confidence. <laughs> You'd think they would at least give it a go. But, you know, hey. <laughs> we already tried to, uh, to vote of no confidence our outgoing president right now. I uh, don't know if you guys keep up with political news in the U.S., but we did give it a go, and it didn't take here on Earth either, so oh well. <laughs> um, yes, Chancellor Valorum was disliked because he was a bureaucrat. I know, I know, but I just feel like if they established that that's a thing you can do, that they should have at least tried it again. <laughs> or at least have um, 
have Padme suggest it and then have uh, uh, what's his name? You know the senator who's who's always hanging around with her, Jimmy Smith. Uh, have Bail Organa be like, no, Padme, we can't call for a vote of no confidence because the Chancellor is too powerful. At least throw it in there that he says it, you know? That always just sat with me and annoyed me. <laughs> they could still impeach him or execute Order 65, which uh, arrest the Chancellor. Yeah, that's true. Um, but of course, the whole the whole thing about the prequels is that it's a, it's a whole series of errors in judgment that led to the outcome, right? Uh, the Jedi were too arrogant, so they, they didn't send enough people to arrest Palpatine, even though they had been forewarned that he was a Sith Lord. Uh, the Jedi were too arrogant to see that ev everything was crumbling around them. They, they had forgotten about helping ordinary people and were more concerned about their power. So this was all, all these different errors kind of added up to fascism, which is a, a real bummer. But I'm super glad that the, the sequels exist because... Something that people don't really tend to realize is they say that um, Return of the Jedi was already the perfect ending for Star Wars. But that is true until you have the prequels. The prequels introduced a new problem into the Star Wars galaxy, which is we have now seen that the Empire was not just this, this forever thing that had always been around and needed to be defeated. It's a cycle, right? So you have a... Uh, you have a regular democratic government, which gets overthrown by fascism and then has to be resisted and torn down. So what we got to see in the, in the sequel trilogy is that cycle beginning to happen again as the galaxy moves back towards fascism. But this time they made the right decisions and they didn't fall back into the darkness. So episode nine is a great true ending to the saga because not only did they defeat evil, but they managed to make it stay defeated. And I think that's pretty cool. Favorite lightsaber color? Um, I use yellow in Fallen Order, but I really like that purple. That Samuel L. Jackson had a good, good instinct for picking lightsaber color. What is your next big ship project after the Architens? Um, I really want to do the Aravana, um, which is the ship that Han Solo and Chewie were flying around in uh, in Force Awakens after they lost the Falcon. I think that one's a really cool ship. Isn't Palpatine technically still alive because Rey killed him? Uh, yeah. So I think what's cool about it is Palpatine represents the evil at every stage of of the galaxy in the in the Star Wars universe. You know, because he's the looming threat of political corruption in the prequels. Then he's literally the emperor in, in the uh, original trilogy. And then he's the kind of the threat of manipulation creeping back in. Like, like think about him using Snoke all throughout the, uh, the sequel trilogy. It's basically like the Russia propaganda in the Star Wars universe, right? He's like, he's using a troll account to trick the, the youth of the next generation into becoming fascist all over again. So I really like that they found a way to make Palpatine represent all the different challenges that uh, people face when trying to defeat evil in the galaxy. Yeah, that's fun. The Empire is more successful than the New Republic. Yeah, I mean, they endured for longer, for sure, but the New Republic was only kind of defeated in The Force Awakens and then was reinstated after uh, uh, Episode Nine. So I have a feeling the New Republic will endure for a long, long, long time. Maybe. <laughs> uh, how many astromech droids do you have? Quite a lot. Um, I know, almost two hours, right? That's crazy. Uh, I have, let's see, I'm looking behind me right now, my Lego wall. I mean, I think I have at least 40 to 45, 50 maybe astromech droids up there. Most of them are R2-D2s. <laughs> um, but I have a lot of other ones too. Oh, how cool was it to see R5 again? Uh, if you guys pay close attention to recent Star Wars materials, uh, I thought that was pretty nice. Classic R5 with his um, dented head. See ya. Uh, let's see, I have to go. Oh yeah, uh, goodbye, Oliver. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. 
I'm going to go back on mom. Okay. Oh, mom, Mothman's grave. <laughs> yes, that's true. For those of you guys who don't know what um, Elian is talking about, Mon Mothma, uh, you know, the, the leader of the rebellion, she uh, demilitarized the New Republic before she retired. She made all the Y-Wings take out their bombs and basically just demilitarize the galaxy to try to avoid future war. But of course, if you demilitarize, then there's nothing to stop when the new bad guys show up. And the new bad guys happen to be the same as the old bad guys, but still. Disney's printing money with Mando licensing. I mean, I guess so. The, th the cool thing is a lot of people say uh, certain things are done just to make toys out of, but I think that's not true. I think when you look at something like Mandalorian that has like Baby Yoda in it, that is, you know, Baby Yoda is an amazing like creation as not only as a fun little baby character, but as a puppet and his role in the story is really fun. So, People want to have toys of that thing, not just because it looks cute, but because of the whole package, right? The story that's being told surrounding it. And I think successful toys come from things people like already, not the other way around. I think if you try to make something just to sell toys, it wouldn't work because no one would be attached to it. Um, yes, every time I see a ship on the Mandalorian that I've already made, I scream like a little child. And my wife is like, what, what is that now? I don't know if you guys do this, but I, I watch The Mandalorian with my wife every week and I'm always like, I'm always pausing it like every 10 seconds and I'm like, that's an Easter egg. That's, there's a backstory there. Hold on, wait, we've got to stop so I can explain that to you. And she's like, okay, I don't care. Let's just watch the episode. Jesus. <laughs> I've got stuff to do. Um, the Empire maintained control through a strong military the New Republic didn't understand that was needed. Yeah, I mean, yes and no. I think the problem that happened with the New Republic was that they they basically just tried to reinstate the old Republic, right? They they If you read some of the, the books and stuff, like uh, I really liked uh, Bloodline, um, it kind of explained the state of the politics in the galaxy before the First Order took over. And basically, it was kind of like modern day politics where once the the big bad threat was defeated everyone just sort of went back to sleep right and the senators started to become corrupt again they started to open themselves up to to uh influences that were harmful to democracy and so they allowed the fascists to, to rise again until they were ready to strike so the lesson is if you want to protect your freedom you have to be vigilant and whenever new threats come up, you have to deal with them straight away. You can't just get complacent like the New Republic did. Hi. Hello to all the new people who are joining in. Hi. Does your wife like Star Wars? She she likes it enough. Um, she definitely wouldn't be watching a lot of the stuff that I make her watch <laughs> otherwise. Like, we watched the Star Wars holiday special together, and I I can't really imagine any uh, any universe existing where we weren't together where she would watch that on her own. So. <laughs> But my wife is very supportive of my Star Wars obsession, and she, she watches stuff with me. But um, it's funny, like, Avengers, Star Wars, uh, any of those big, like, CGI-filled blockbuster things, we watch them, and I'm, like, talking about it right afterwards with her. Like, oh, man, I love this bit, I love this bit, I love this bit. And she's like, what was it again? Because <laughs> it goes right out of her head. She's like, okay, that was cool. I'm done now. <laughs> so I definitely... Uh, geek out about things a lot more. Baby Yoda vomiting was the cutest thing. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, and I knew that was going to happen. As soon as, he, as soon as he got a hold of that macaron, I was like, that thing is super blue. It looks like it's toxic to Baby Yoda, and he's going to barf it up. And sure enough, he did. <laughs> My mom didn't watch any movies with me. I watched Avengers 3 and 4, and she was there. Oh, man. I mean, you know, yeah, it, that's, that's how it is, right? We, you have to find people who uh, share your interests enough that you can uh, geek out with them about it. Can't, unfortunately, can't force the people that we love to love the things that we love. <laughs> uh, let's see, the Zeistin Star Destroyer is the bane of my existence. Literally, Rogue One Star Destroyer, but with a big gun. Oh, yeah, I know. I've heard a lot of people complaining about that, too. I 
So to me, I didn't mind that it was just a regular Star Destroyer with a gun on it. What I minded was that it was a regular Star Destroyer with a gun on it that could destroy a whole planet. That to me was like, why? Like, like it didn't need to be able to destroy planets, right? If it was just Palpatine had a fleet of 100,000 ships and he was going to launch an offensive against the galaxy and no one would be able to stand against him because there's just too many ships. That's enough, right? It doesn't need to also be a planet killer. Um, because... In 30 years, they went from uh, a Death Star that can blow up a planet to a Death Star 2 to a planet that can blow up a planet to then just a Star Destroyer. Like that leap doesn't really make sense in terms of the technology. I mean, sure, we went from giant supercomputers to iPhones in a matter of like 60 years, but you know, it took a long, it took a lot of doing. And I don't think Palpatine had the resources out there on that uh, planet of his out there in Exegol to come up with that technology. But uh, what are you going to do? I kind of feel like the Mandalorian is going to do a lot of the work to bridge the gaps of logic um, in the sequel trilogy, the way that Clone Wars did for the prequels. So I'm really excited for that. Um, I think Mandalorian, I could see it going for like seven, eight seasons and really packing in a lot of like dense lore. And my hope, I don't know about you guys, but I hope that Din Djarin eventually becomes the ruler of Mandalore by the end of the show and like brings the culture back to, you know, like a balance between the old warrior ways that he's currently obsessed with and, and the new ways of kind of political intrigue that they're more into now. I think that'd be really cool. Uh, a good arc for his character. Star Wars Galaxy's tech level is pretty stagnant. It's true. <laughs> yeah, the Old Republic, now Now we're getting the High Republic, which is going to kind of change the tone of what old um, Star Wars stuff was before the movies. So the High Republic is something I'm very, very interested in. I read that little uh, excerpt of the opening of that um, the first book. Uh, I thought that was really cool. So I'm very much looking forward to High Republic stuff. This is the way. It is. It is the way. Palpatine has a retirement plan. <laughs> he does. That guy's, he has so many plans except the one plan that matters to spend time with his family. You know, if he'd have just hung out with his kid instead of banishing him from Exegol or whatever, then... You know, maybe he could have found some satisfaction in life instead of trying to take over the galaxy again. Uh, Lampshade, it's time to go, unfortunately. Well, thank you for joining. I'm actually going to be wrapping up here in a few minutes myself because we're about to hit 2.30. And I have a lot of stuff I have to do. Run some errands and things safely at a distance with a mask on. Um, but yeah, I got a lot of stuff going on today as well. Thank you for joining, though. It's been really fun. Uh, sorting out Lego with you guys. As predicted, I did not make as much of a dent in this as I would have liked. It kind of looks like more of a mess than when I started, right? <laughs> but I, I know where everything is now, and I have all these different uh, trays, so that's good. Have you ever been to Galaxy's Edge? I have, yeah. I live pretty close to Galaxy's Edge. About uh, It's about 40 minutes from me, and uh, it was really, really fun. Um, and now that I have the, the Disney passes, I, I could go all the time if I wanted to, because I work for the company. But uh, COVID makes it so that that is impractical. So <laughs> I just have to wait until this all blows over. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to seeing the High Republic. Yeah, me too. Um, I think it will, it will be interesting to see a time in the Star Wars galaxy where there is no war because that's never been done before. So it's, that's like really cool, actually. And I think for that same reason, I would have loved to have seen a Qui-Gon... Uh, a young Qui-Gon Jinn series, like during the time when the Republic was headed towards war, but not in one. I think that would have been really fun. Like wh what were the things the Jedi dealt with back then? But um, yeah, I think we're going to get a lot of that with the High Republic. So it's going to be cool. Oh, all right. This thing, did any of you guys build my updated ATAT or uh, AAT mock? It was a lot of fun. But uh, it served its purpose, and now it gets destroyed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I do believe we're going to get to see Yoda. That's true. 
Uh, thanks for showing up, Eva. Have a great day. Um, yeah, I think they've confirmed that Yoda is going to be in the High Republic uh, in some capacity. I want to see Ahsoka and Mando fighting together to rescue the child. Well, won't that be fun? I, I have a feeling you're going to get your wish if you watch the show. I mean, they've already said, literally, in the show, go find Ahsoka Tano. So, <laughs> so that's going to be cool. Um, all right, you guys. So, yeah, I'm going to call it right there. Thank you guys so much for joining my first ever stream. This was so fun and, like, super smooth, actually, other than my dog Parker uh, deciding to bark his head off midway through the stream there. Uh, I think we did pretty well. So yeah, I'll see you guys on another one of these. Um, I'm going to try to make them as regularly as I can. Don't expect them every week though, but we'll see. Um, all right, guys. Thanks so much. Uh, don't forget, get all your friends to subscribe so we can get to that, uh, that 100K mark. All right. Stay safe out there, everybody. Bye.